Hi, Steve Arnold here. Now, in this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you an easy way to fix colors in your landscape images using a curves adjustment layer. So before we get started, if you like this video, then just go ahead and subscribe to my post processing mastery channel using the button below. And if you want to download my PDF cheat sheet, which gives you my uh, full end to end six step Photoshop workflow for editing landscapes, then there's a link in the description below where you can go and grab that download. So uh, yeah, let's get started with this tutorial. Now the image that I've got on the screen at the moment is quite badly underexposed and it's very blue. And this is something that can easily happen when uh, using any kind of like automated settings such as aperture mode and auto white balance when shooting like uh, you know a lot of snow which this obviously is at the top of a mountain so yeah i'm just going to show you how we can fix this up just with one relatively simple curves adjustment layer so all i've got at the moment is the background image open i'll add this curves adjustment layer here now so the first thing that i'm going to do if you haven't seen these before we've got these eyedroppers here which allow us to choose the uh, the the highlights the white point which is this one here, the mid-tones and, or the midpoint, I should say, and then the uh, the black point in the image. Personally, a little tip, I tend to find that if using the, uh, the, the black point, then it can make the image, it can just give it a bit too much contrast. So we uh, may or may not use this, but let's start off with the white point eyedropper. And what we need to do is just click on that little icon there and then find in the image what is going to be basically the, the brightest point in the uh, frame. Now it's a bit difficult to tell just looking at the shot so one way that you can do that is uh, either holding Alt or Option on the keyboard so Alt for PC, Option for Mac, hold that down and then move this slider here and just when we can start seeing some pixels show through in the main image so there's a little blue patch just appearing now then what that's telling us is that that's basically the brightest part of the shot. So uh, just kind of trying to keep my eye on those pixels as I as I sort of revert this back to the original position. And we can see here that's this little piece of a uh, little bit of snow there. Just you know, just looking at it, you can see that probably is brightest just uh, just by eye now. So I'll click that once, and then we should see that's uh, that's already made quite a significant impact. If I just turn this layer off and on now, we can see the uh, the effect of that. So the idea with the midpoint or the, the gray point here, as, uh, as described in this little pop-up, what we have to do here is try and find a color in the image that should be mid gray, middle gray. Now there can be a little bit of guesswork here, but a little thing that I like to do is uh, to, before I select the uh, the gray point here, just click on this little hand um, toggle thing and then move the mouse around the image and you can see as I do that there's like a little ball that's sliding up and down the curve depending on where I'm hovering the mouse. So what I'm looking for is to find a point in the image where it's about in the middle um, which is probably about here. Uh, let's just have a look over here. This, yeah, this is a bit too dark, so you can see because the, uh, the that little circle that's going up and down the curve, that's down towards the left, which means uh, that's you know that I'm hovering over shadows rather than midtones at the moment. So um, yeah, probably yeah, I think I'll choose an area around here. So I won't click now. What I'll do is just go back over, grab that grey point or that midpoint um, eyedropper, and then click back on there now. And so what that's done it has pretty much removed that really strong blue color cast to the image and made where I selected here, that's made that gray, it's made this first one here white and adjusted each of the color channels individually to, uh, to basically make that happen. And so I don't think I need to use the black point again, uh, like I mentioned just a minute ago, because we're doing pretty good in the shadows at the moment. We're not really uh, you know, I don't really want to turn the shadows completely black. I like where they are now. One thing that you can do, it can be a bit of, um, you know, personal taste here really, because 
Technically, this is probably a correct white balance with the whites and the greys looking, uh, you know, how they should. But the thing is, when you're actually uh, out there in the real world, there is probably a bit of a blue um, color cast, a blue haze to this kind of shot because it's such a large landscape. So it's quite far away. Um, and so you're going to get a bit of natural haze. So what I think I'll do here is just try and add a little bit of that blue back in. And the way I'll do that is select the uh, the blue channel here in this drop down. There's uh, this this little dot here. I don't know if you can see that, but just I'll click that and select it with the mouse and just push it up just to increase the blue just a little bit. And so that's by eye. Basically, this is like I say, personal preference. And there we go. That's pretty much it. I think that's a you know quite a decent um, improvement in terms of the color and exposure. So. Yeah, that's how you can do it just with uh, one curves adjustment. All right, I hope you enjoyed this short video tutorial. If you like shooting landscapes and you want to learn how to put all these individual tips and techniques that you're learning into a structured six step Photoshop workflow, then click the download button and I'll send you my free PDF cheat sheet that lays everything out for you step by step.